Hey, beautiful friends. We are back with another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I'm so glad you're here with me today. I have a problem solving and relationship expert with me, and we are going to dive into how you can make decisions, look at problems, and identify exactly what the problem is instead of making a mountain out of a molehill, so to speak. But we're going to, oh, you guys, I'm just so excited. This conversation is going to be so powerful. So my guest today is Sarah K. Ramsey. She is a two-time author, and she's this today. We're going to talk about her book, Problem Solved, Simple Habits for Complex Decisions. But we're also going to tie in a little bit about her other book, Becoming Toxin, Toxic Person Proof, Clear the, Clear the Confusion, and Learn to Trust Yourself. So... This is going to get deep, but Sarah's got such a beautiful light and personality that we're going to have a little fun with it too. So without further ado, Sarah K. Ramsey, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Hi, Robin. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. I loved your book, as I told you before, and I'm super excited to dive into this conversation. I did a blog post and I'll link it in the show notes for the listeners on you know, one of the the biggest things that holds you back in your entrepreneurial journey is that inability to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And my advice for making decision, I gave like three steps. Your book is so comprehensive. So I am going to encourage everybody. I'll have the link to the book in the show notes. You definitely want to check it out because each chapter is, it is better than the other. Like there were... <laughs> And you should be Sarah, because it was Aww. really, really well written and your stories make everything fun and lighthearted in somewhat of a deep topic. Right. So with that being That's said, the power, that is why right? I said, cause I'm like Graham type seven. It's like, whoa, you're like this like fun personality. And then you talk about like really complicated subjects. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's my, that's my superpower. Yeah. So. It's your superpower. You do a really great job. But so before we dive in to talk about all this good stuff, will you just tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to this point in your journey? So I used to be the world's biggest people pleaser. Like I could have been like an advanced degree in, in people pleasing. And, um, which honestly for me, I was like the quintessential good girl. So in a lot of ways that people pleasing actually worked out for me pretty well for a long time until it didn't. And then I was facing the decision whether or not to get a divorce. Pastor's daughter married to my student pastor's brother. Um, and a people pleaser, the way they make decisions is like, okay, how do I make you happy? How do I do the right thing? What is the right thing? It's usually what other people think I should be doing. Um, you know, how do I not make this person mad? How do I, you know, remain a good girl and keep up that good girl image in, in a real, like not in like a secret life way and like, I really wanted to be a good person way. Um, and that was how I was making decisions. So then when it became just something as complicated and terrible as whether or not I get a divorce with young kids involved, um, I didn't have the skills to make a good decision. I didn't have the processes of making a good decision. And so my body literally shut down from stress. I went um, to a girls weekend with my college roommates, no drinking, no drugs, nothing. And my body shut down while driving a car. And my friend had to grab the wheel, like jerk me off the car. My body was so stressed. My hair was falling out. I was losing weight, gaining weight. My face was a mess. Like everything in my life was a mess. <laughs> Cause how do people pleasers make decisions? I didn't know. Right. And that's where the concept, one of the major com concepts of the book is taking problems from spaghetti to waffles. Yeah. Okay. So I had a big spaghetti problem. Oh dear. My dad works, my, my dad's family and my, um, at the time, husband's family all work together. Oh dear. I'm affecting a lot of people's lives. Oh dear. I'm going to make, this is going to be a major impact on my kids. Oh dear. My physical health is like shutting down in a way. I don't think I can keep doing this. Oh dear. Like everyone's going to be mad at me. Oh dear. Divorce is wrong. Oh dear. This is like, I mean, it was a huge spaghetti decision that I would just circle around, circle around, circle around. And I had to learn to waffle it down. Okay. Because how am I going to tell people I'm going to get a divorce and how am I going to provide financially for my kids are not the same problem. OK, 
Okay. They are very specific individual problems, but when we're scared, when it's an emotional decision, when it's a huge decision, it all gets jumbled up in our heads. And it happens all the time for women in business all the time. Yesterday, I had an entrepreneur who had a wonderful problem. She had too many clients. She was having too many referrals. She had a three-month waiting list, a fabulous problem. And But she said, I'm listening to your book for the second time because I need to figure out how to hire someone else. And, you know, what am I going to do about it? You know, she was in spaghetti thinking like, well, okay, if I hire this person's contract, then this is going to happen. And what if they steal my material? And, you know, what if they only work for me a short time and then they take my material and they start their own business, right? Spaghetti problem. Okay. Totally different problem, but the same type of thinking, which is how to protect your intellectual property is not the same problem as do I hire a part-time or full-time? Uh-huh not the same problem to solve. And if you start to learn to waffle it out or waffle it down, you can, you can develop different strategies to get you moving forward pretty quickly. Well, and you talked in the book about the emotional problem and then the more uh, tactical or strategic problem. So, you know, let's break that down a little bit because the examples you just gave are exactly that you have this emotional problem. And I think as people pleasers, those emotions of, you know, perfectionism and making sure everybody else is happy first and putting ourselves on the back burner, so to speak, is Mm -hmm. so common. And anybody who has anxiety, that's going to even be elevated because Mm -hmm. the perfectionism is elevated. The, you know, the what if thoughts are going crazy. So all of these things, I can see how segregating those problems is so key for making decisions to go forward. Otherwise you're going to stay stuck. You're muddled. You don't even know which problem to address first. Mm -hmm. And most people, public speaking is one of the easiest ways to explain this. Okay. So being nervous about public speaking and knowing what you're going to say, two different problems to solve. Okay. But they get jumbled together. People say, Oh, what's going on? Oh, I'm really nervous. I don't know what I'm going to say. Right. It's very, that's easy to see like a spaghetti problem, super normal spaghetti problem. Um, But if you don't solve the problem of public speaking or putting yourself out there, oftentimes it's going to have a huge financial cost for you. Right. Yeah. So what our brains do when our nervous system is trying to keep us safe, but it's not working correctly uh, or is working correctly and just, you know, love not in our favor, system. not in our favor. Yes. Um, we often create, if you might take both hands and your left hand is the emotional problem to solve and your right hand is the practical problem to solve. Oftentimes we like, it's like a T shape and we put the emotional problem. You like take your left hand, put it on top of your right hand and creates a T shape with your hands. So the emotional problem to solve is the top hand and the practical problem to solve is the bottom hand. Okay. And we block the practical steps that will actually take us to a solution because we've kind of smothered it with those emotional problems. And when anytime there's mindset issues, what am I going to do next to my business? Who am I going to hire? Um, How much money am I going to put towards that? If your emotional problems are T shape blocking the practical problems to solve, you're in trouble. Okay. And think about if you take your left and right high, left hand and right hand, and just kind of have them like almost like Madonna, like you frame your face, you know, (laughs) but have them, you know, just side by side and think about solving the emotional problems and the practical problems as a side by side process. Like, okay, what plan am I going to have for fixing the anxiety around public speaking? Different strategy than what's my plan for figuring out what to say. And those are like side tracks, right? Or like train tracks running side by side. You want to, yes, I'm not talking about stuffing your emotions. I'm talking about not blocking yourself by focusing only on the emotional problems to solve, which is what I see women do rather than feeling comfortable with the practical problems to solve. Okay. And this is why so many smart, successful women, it's like, oh, if I'm, I don't have this problem at work. Right. Especially if you like have been like in corporate, right. Cause starting your own business and being an entrepreneur is much more emotional than <laughs> being in the, right. It's like, Oh, people are going to 
judge me for this or, you know, uh, so you might not have ran into that version of yourself at work in a corporate situation. Cause it's like, okay, well, this is what my boss tells me I'm supposed to do. So even if I'm not happy with it, I'm going to do it because that's what my boss told me. Well, you don't have a boss. You are the boss. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's not how you make a decision. Just what your boss says, right? You, you have to figure out that process on your own and be just really passionate. I, I see so many women and they use those emotional problems to solve to block their practical solutions and they, they get stuck. I loved in the book, Sarah, you have your seven step problem solving. Mm-hmm. And I can see how that can help alleviate that mm-hmm. emotional block. So mm-hmm. will you talk about that a little bit? Yes. And if anyone's familiar with agile, I've had some people who are certified in agile and some, some of those strategies. And they're like, well, Gonna, they actually said this was better than that. I'm just, I'm going to, you know, if you're, you're not watching the podcast, I'm like flipping my hair, like, you know, strutting my, strutting my peacock wings, um, as women often do fault. Yeah. As women don't do enough. I mean, like, so yes, celebrate yourself and those things. I, I was really proud of that. And, um, they have the, the five whys like, you know, but why, but why, yeah. but why? And, I hate the why question, actually, which I talk about in a different concept of the book, but um, really digging into what problem are you trying to solve? Okay. What problem are you trying to solve? And it is the magic question. It is so important. And it, it's kind of like when people say, well, what do you want? You're like, well, I don't know. I can tell you what I don't want. Okay. That's not that helpful, right? Like what problem are you trying to solve? Well, it might be this, it might be this, it might be, right? It's like, whoa, 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 we are all over the place, right? And it's so normal to be all over the place and for females, especially to talk all over the place. And I love females. I love female brains. I work with females. I am female. Like I'm not judging you here. I'm saying I was in a corporate training and it said that men's brains are actually more compartmentalized and that female brains, the right and left side of the brain communicate with each other. Okay. So that's where we get a lot of women's intuition. It is our superpower and it is our kryptonite and it is my superpower and it is my kryptonite. I am raising my hand, not pointing a finger here, but if I'm all over the place, I'm all over the place and I'm tired. I'm not getting where I want to go. I'm spending a lot of energy trying to even figure out what the problem is, right? So asking what problem are you trying to solve? What problem are you really trying to solve? What problem are you really, really trying to solve? What problem are you really trying to solve? You start to get such clarity and a real, like, um, I think about my work as like, I'm holding a flashlight and I'm trying to like figure out where exactly to shine that light because we live in the information age. Another important component of this is that our parents did not grow up with the internet. Okay. The teachers that taught us did not grow up with the internet. They, we, they did not grow up in the information age. So how we make decisions after Google is different than how we make decisions before Google. Okay. So like, like light bulb. Oh yeah. 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 But we weren't taught. Right. So it, it is a new process and With all the information at our fingertips, it's really about learning how to narrow down the information to figure out what problem we're really trying to solve. And a lot of times, if you know what problem you're really trying to solve, it can be as simple as a Google search. It really can. Like almost there's almost always an article or information or whatever. It's like, okay, I need this strategy in the public speaking conversation. Um, Maybe one Google search would be how to manage your nerves during public speaking. Another Google search would be how to be funny in a public speaking event, right? Mm -hmm. Those aren't the same Google searches. You are not going to get the same answer. And if you're working with a coach or something, it's really about like what strategy is needed for the exact problem. And the strategies are available to us in the information age. But if we don't come up with the exact problem, we're tired. 48% of women in corporate are burned out right now. I know entrepreneurs are too. I'm talking to them, right? They're tired. We're all tired after the pandemic. Well, if we're spinning around trying to figure out what problem we're trying to solve, we have no idea. That's that's extra burnout. That's extra stress. And it is preventable. It really, really is. 
Yeah. So this brings us to that, the concept of abstract thinking. Mm -hmm. And you have such a great example of it in your book, but I would love for you to talk a little bit about that because I think when our thoughts are all over the place and I, and I see it with my clients where they're overthinking and Mm -hmm. all that does is lead to procrastination. And the more procrastination you have, the less you do, the less you accomplish, the less likely you are to reach your goals. So if we are ambitious, driven women who want to achieve our goals, who want to have a meaningful impact, overthinking is doing us a complete disservice, plus a disservice to those people who need us to show up for them. So Mm -hmm. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. Yes. So like I said, talking about women and men. So originally I read the book called Design Your Life. Incredible book. Totally highly recommend. Great, great, great. It was written by two male engineers. Okay. So they talked about gravity thinking and actionable thinking. Okay. So they're like, you know, these dudes are like, okay, things we can't do anything about. And they use the example of wanting to be um, a VP in a family business that you're not a part of the family. They were like, you've been working with the business 20 years. You're like, it's you know, a gravity problem, fighting gravity. It's not fair that uh, I'm not going to be VP in the family business because they always promote their family members. Okay. And he t- they talked about that's kind of like fighting gravity. No matter how hard you jump, no matter how fancy your shoes are, no matter how cool your trampoline is, we're not fighting gravity. Like we, we may jump really hard, but it ain't changing. Okay. And for the example of wanting to be a VP in a family business, you're not related to them. It's kind of like, that's a really bad problem to solve because it's a gravity problem. So he talked about, uh, these authors talked about actionable thinking, which is like finding a different job, that kind of thing. And I was, I love the concept. I love the book, but I was like, these are two men and they're engineers. Women have this whole other type of thinking that I call abstract thinking. Okay. So in the concept of gravity, you know, gravity thinking, I'm going to buy better shoes. I'm going to work on my squats. I'm going to beat gravity, right? Like not going to happen. And uh, abstract thinking is like, well, do you think, like, what do you think would happen if I did beat gravity? Do you think I'd really like the moon? Do you think, you know, people would be mad at me if I got on the moon? Do you think it'd be, do you think it's actually going to be that fun on the moon? Or do you think I'd be actually be happier here on earth? And we get into all these whys and what ifs and maybe this and maybe that. And the self-growth industry, which I'm obsessed with, if I have an addiction, it is it is personal growth, absolutely, hands down. But it can be a procrastination because then it's like, what, what if maybe like God doesn't really want me to be on the moon and God really wants me to be in Africa doing missions? And what if I do this? And what if I do that? And what if I'm doing this business? Should, like, it's like this whole like spinning, spinning, spinning that I see, I, I really do believe that's one of the main faults of burnout in women. Things we cannot control. Laundry has to be done. We can hire someone, but there's some household stuff that has to be done. I don't want to outsource my mothering. I love my children. That's not something I want to outsource, right? So, and I love my husband and we have a great time together. So there's already pools on my life that, they're just not going to go away. And I don't want them to, right? I don't want to not have a husband and kids. I love them, right? So those are pieces of burnout I cannot control. This spin cycle in your head, well, maybe this, or maybe that. Well, why this? Why do I really want to do this? Do you think that's really like my authentic self? Or do you think that's really, it creates this extra added stress that we can actually prevent. And I really, really, really believe it will help you prevent burnout with, with all my heart. And it is certainly a gift to not pass that on to the next generation. Mm-hmm. And I love how in the book, you use this example of going to the moon. And then the actionable item is I start my internship at NASA tomorrow, you know, right. so you actually take an action step and maybe you're, maybe you're confused about your career opportunities, whether in corporate or, you know, in, the entrepreneurial journey. And it's like, okay, what can I do to solidify my future? One action step, maybe it's enrolling in a course. Maybe it's, you know, okay, I'm no longer doing this in my business because it's no longer aligned with where I want to be or who I want to serve. 
but making those decisions to actually take an action step. I, I mean, everybody knows I'm all about the action because that's part of the title of my book, but it's, it's so important to, to do. It's something. the only thing. It's the only choice. Like yes. It's the only choice. And I just like recognizing, you know, if you're trying to go to the moon gravity problem, I'm just going to jump harder. You could be jumping for 20 years. And I see a lot of women jumping for 20 years. They are tired. Or maybe I'm just going to analyze the moon more and analyze why I want to go to the moon. Analyze. It's like, no, I see a lot of women really tired. You know, actionable thinking, NASA internship, buy a rocket ship, buy a thing with these billionaires that are going to the moon now, or space now, like whatever. Like there are actionable steps. And an actionable step is something you put on your calendar. It is something that I was visiting you. And I said, what did you do this week? You're not going to say, well, I, I really been thinking about it. No, no, no. And in my work, um, it, it's really easy to see within the toxic relationship. And, you know, I making the shift to things that no longer align with me, but in the toxic relationship space, it's really easy to see women a hundred percent of the time. I wish I had done something sooner. I wish I had taken action sooner. And when people are asking me, what should I do in this situation? Or what advice would you give? I said, well, what I can say with a hundred percent certainty is that most people wish they made decisions sooner. That I can say with a hundred percent certainty. I never hear it the other way, you know, whether it's starting a business, whether it's making that change, whether it's, people always say, oh, this was that started that sooner. So that's a hundred percent for me. Okay. Yeah. When I'm making a decision, hundred percent of the time, people wish they'd done something sooner. The other thing I want to talk about is smart girl syndrome. Okay. It's mainly mentioned in the toxic person proof book, but it's so relevant to anything and with decision-making and smart girl syndrome says, well, if it's not working, I just need to work harder. Okay. And our brains don't automatically think I need to just try something else. If it's not working, try something else. If it's not working, try something else. If it's not working, try something else. That is also, you know, I had, I had these little taglines when someone's stuck. It's like, okay, well, most people wish they'd made a decision earlier. And if it's not working, try something else. The whole Einstein, which they're not really sure Einstein said it, but people say Einstein said it. Um, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, hoping to get different results. Okay. And it's what I call smart girl syndrome. And um smart girls really get frustrated with gravity problems, right? And it's like, I'm just going to jump. I really want to go to the moon. So I'm just going to jump just harder. I'm just going to put the work in and jump harder. It's like, maybe you should go to eat Italian food instead of the moon. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like maybe, maybe the goal is the problem, right? Sometimes it can be the goal is the problem, which often is like the Perfect example, becoming a VP in a family business that you're not in the family. Like it's just a bad problem to solve. Yeah. We get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that brings us to um, well, so much of everything you just said, like even the the abstract thinking, I think is so much worse for people pleasers. But if you are stuck in a situation, and if you're especially because, you know, listeners, most of you are entrepreneurs or you're considering jumping into entrepreneurship and hire a coach, mm -hmm. hire a mentor, hire someone to help you instead of sitting in that place of overthinking or being frustrated. Because the reality is if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, but maybe even in a different way, but it's still not working, then you have to take a different action. And I see this all the time that people are, they're stuck because they're overthinking and they keep trying the same thing over and over again. It's not going to work. <laughs> if it didn't work the first 10 times, it's not going to work the next 10 times. <laughs> and if you've not been able to do, so I use the example of my daughter, um, when she, the COVID pandemic, all that crazy stuff happened. Um, she missed third grade reading. That's a bad, that's a bad grade to miss. Okay. Third grade reading. I was like, Oh, this isn't good. Right. Gravity problem. Third grade reading. Like she missed it. Like a lot of third grade reading. Okay. It's a gravity problem. Abstract problem. Oh, do you think she's going to be okay? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I just really worry about her I and mean, her friends. I mean, she's already better reading than her friends, but what if this, you know, what if she doesn't make it to honors classes in high school and then she's with, she's a drug, a drug boyfriend. And like, I mean, 
that's abstract thinking. Okay. Actionable thinking. Let's find a tutor for her. And, and I did. Um, so within that process, I use this example and I say, what if I hire a tutor for my daughter for reading? And it's been two years and she still can't read with that tutor. Do you think I should hire that tutor for year three? And they're like, no, I'm like, okay. So how long have you been trying what you've been trying? I love year, it. Right. Do you, you know, it's the same decision-making process, right? It's the same decision-making process. Um, and Robin, there's a lot of things in my life that I'm working on, that I want to work on, that I need to work on. One of my best qualities is like, who is an expert at this? And I will find them and hire them. And there's actually a whole chapter in the book in Problem Solved about like, why in the world are we like, there is no gold star fairy that's coming down and giving you a sticker for making it hard. No gold star fairy. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. And I, I think at some point in my life, I did think that it was like, I'm just, you know, if it's hard, it's like the suffering is going to be, and it's like, well, sometimes it's just suffering. Sometimes it's just suffering. It's, it's not helpful. Yeah. And, and there's no payoff. There is no payoff. There's a lot yeah. of payoff to be helpful. There's a lot of payoff to getting help. I have hired so many people. As soon as I got a problem, I'm like, who knows how to fix this? Let, who's the yeah. expert in this? Who, you know, and people are like, you put out two books in a, basically a year. It's like, yeah. Well, you're in abstract thinking. You're not you, Robin, but you know, you're yeah. in abstract thinking. You're stuck in overthinking. You're stuck in procrastination. You're tired because you're solving problems that don't have solutions. I'm not. I got a lot more time than you. Yeah. I really do. I have more time and energy because I'm not Over stuck in my head and I'm not solving problems that don't have solutions. It really is that simple. And that's, it's just, I just think women are tired. My friends are tired. A lot of people are glossed over. Um, and it's very sad and it's very heartbreaking. And it's just yeah. kind of like, it doesn't have to be this way. It really doesn't. It's so, nobody's fault. Like we're in the information age now. Yeah, absolutely. And this book is right at everybody's fingertips. It's a, a click of a button away, right? So the one thing that I want to circle to is the how versus why. And, mm -hmm. you know, briefly at the beginning mm -hmm. of our conversation, you said the, the is it a line and the, the five whys? Um, and how you don't like whys. And you have a chapter in the book about the why versus mm -hmm. the how and how how is how you're going to get to a decision or a solution. So I'd like for you to touch on that for just a second. I had a lady who I love and she um, worked with me as a client and then had a major health issue. Okay. So a major health issue. Like she um, worked for a big five consulting term, had, you know, super great career woman. And then got knocked down by this health issue. And she, she called me and she said, you know, I keep going like, why? And it's like, why would God do this? Why would this happen? Why would this, which is abstract thinking. And I said, my biggest advice to you is not to think about those things at all, because you are never going to have an answer. And it is never going to matter. I would focus what problem are you trying to solve? Getting healthy. What doctors can you get? What this? I mean, those why questions take up so much exhaustion. They, they, they are just so exhausting and there are not answers. There is not, and it's such procrastination. I mean, last week I had a family member. Do you think the reason that I like haven't like found this guy with dating is because like this happened with my parents? Do you think that's why? And I was like, it doesn't matter why. When's the last time you went out and met new people? When's the last time you, and that's a, when you think about decision-making strategies in that process, it doesn't matter if it's dating. It doesn't matter if it's a health scare. It doesn't matter if it's parenting. It doesn't matter if it's family. It doesn't matter if it's business. It doesn't matter if it's hiring. It, it's like, this is how to make a good decision. When you are stuck in the why, and there's not an answer, it's an abstract concept. You're just trying to figure out, you know, the meaning of life or why God struck you with lightning. God doesn't really strike you with lightning, you know, but you know, I just, you're sitting here with kids. <laughs> They get in their heads and they ask themselves such terrible questions that are so exhausting. And so they, they create a sense of helplessness, uh -huh. right? When there is a way forward, if you know what problem you're trying to solve, like, you know, uh, getting the best care for the health situation, then you, you can do that. You can make an action plan out of that. If you're trying to figure out why bad things happen to good people, oh, it's just exhausting. 
Yeah. And I want to know too. It's not that I don't want to know the answer. It's that there is no answer. <laughs> we don't yeah. know. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to discern that. Like, am I asking something that is even reasonable or am I asking something that's so far-fetched that it's not worth my time and my energy? And this leads me to another section of the book, um, the butt mouth. And I loved this concept. I thought it was so fun because how many times have I had clients and I'll say, well, you know, maybe what do you think about this idea? Well, but no, that wouldn't work for me, but Mm -hmm. that wouldn't work for my clients. But no, I tried that already. And these butts and how they hold you back. And I would love for you to talk about that just briefly. And then we'll start wrapping up. So there's problem finders and problem solvers. And a lot of people pride themselves on being problem um, finders. And I want to say as much as I, like no one likes you. Like, I just want to say it. Like no one likes, that. like <laughs> no one likes you. No one likes that. It doesn't make people feel good. And I don't know. I know I have people like that in my own life and they think they're being helpful. And it's like, you know, if I'm rewiring my house for like, I don't know how to do that, but if I'm rewiring my house for electricity and I ask you to come in and like problem solve, so my house doesn't catch on fire at that point, that's helpful in being a problem finder. But if you can never be a problem solver and make the transition, like no one likes you. I just want to say like, if you have any people pleasing tendency in you ever, this is like the way for people to like dislike you the most. Okay. Cause it's not, fun. It's not nice. It's not helpful. And it's, it's not productive. Okay. Um, and so if you find yourself like, well, I mean, I, I, I would do that, but I would do that, but okay. The best way to approach this with yourself and with others is with humor. Okay. And because it is so ingrained in us that you could say, so it's like, Oh, I smell a little butt mouth in there, you know, and it's, then it kind of becomes funny and light. And like, it's a, it's called a pattern interrupt right? So you're shifting the mood. Um, my daughter, I can't believe I'm saying this on recording. She has discovered Sir Mix-a-Lot. I like big butts and it is like, she thinks it's so funny to sing now. And I'm just, it's, you know, it's probably not going to win me mother of the year. I, you know, it's not my favorite. I was like, how did she find this song? You know, but it's kind of, but it's a funny example, right? You know, it's like, I like big butts and I, I can't not lie. Right? It's yeah. like, okay, we don't like big butts. You know, like big butts in our life create blocks. And if every time someone offers you a solution and I will not do this for people because I'm like, uh-uh, 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 I am not doing all the work of this for you. Hardcore, hard boundary. If the, this game, because it is a game, let me watch you work and let me shot, shoot down all your ideas so I can feel like I'm doing something when I'm really not. Like I have too much self-respect for myself to engage in those types of conversations. Okay. Well, if you think nothing's going to work, then I mean, I would just give up. What? I don't want to give up. Well, then where are we going to go from here? Because you you were loving these big butts, right? And you could tell I've gotten over my people pleasing a lot. Uh- <laughs> I, I love I love it though. And you 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 have such great examples in the book, and I think it's really important for people to realize because. If you're trying, if you're tired of being in the rut that you're in, but yet, but (laughs) in quotes, you're, (laughs) you're just making excuses after excuses Mm -hmm. or countering everything that someone who's trying to help you is providing for you, you're still going to be in the same rut. Mm -hmm. So it's that thing nice about engaging in that conversation. No, right. It's kind, right. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. It's you're not being kind to yourself. You're not being kind to the person that is standing by you, who who isn't going to stay by you for much longer if you continue in that realm, right? Um, but I think that's so important to recognize that you know there are little words, and I love the word yet because I'm not a millionaire yet, or you know whatever it is, I'm not a rock star yet. You know whatever yeah. that dream of yours is. Yeah. That's a positive thing. Mm-hmm. Like you can hang on to that little three letter word, but some of these others, why? But you, they're going to get you absolutely nowhere because they're not motivating action. They're not creating momentum, which creates progress. So you're going to be stuck in the same exact place. It's fancy procrastination. We have, and you know, 
I'm, I love therapy. I'm not dissing therapy, but like that whole like self-discovery why thing has like created, like, we used to call this worry, right? Like this is, this person's a worry wart. Now I'm an overthinker. Like we dressed it up to give ourselves permission to do it as if it was a good quality and it's still a bad quality. It's always a bad quality if it's not getting what you want. If worrying and overthinking and asking why is getting you what you want, have at it. If it's not getting you what you want, try something else. That's the only two choices. Yeah, I love this. Sarah, this has been such a great conversation. Listeners, I will put the link to the book in the show notes. Um, I'm holding it up for anybody watching on YouTube. It's called Problem Solved. And I encourage you to just start taking action. Like if you are, have experienced any of this stuff and sometimes it's, you need to sit down and do some self-reflection because you don't even recognize the areas of your life you're doing this. But if there's, if you're feeling tired, sit down and just take a look at every aspect of your life. Is it a relationship? Is it your business? Is it your kids? Is is it your, your relationship with your parents or other family members? discover what it is that is weighing you down and where you're using all of these words that are preventing you from even recognizing what the true problem is so that you can solve it. Sarah, how can the listeners find you, connect with you, learn more from you? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram and TikTok as Sarah K. Ramsey author and on Facebook as Sarah K. Ramsey bounce back. Um, Definitely check out my podcast, Toxic Person Proof, which is started my early journey, but it's a lot of this type of information. And and we have all had a toxic relationship, whether it be a friendship or a boss. Uh, it, it's more about a toxic person encounter than a um, just about toxic relationships. But that uh, is a very popular podcast. And then check out Problem Solved, Simple Habits for Complex Decisions. Thank you, Sarah. Listeners, if you found this information helpful, I ask that you please share it. I am sure you have someone in your life who could benefit from this information. I think we all do. And I would love for you also to leave a rating and review because that helps more people find Sarah, more people find the podcast and helps us help others more and create that ripple effect of good in the world. So thank you so much for being here. Have a fabulous week and I'll see you next time.